What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here in one of my favorite parking lot locations because guess what? We have that totally redesigned, famous nameplate of an SUV. This is it. This is the all new 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. But before we get into this midsize three row SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Nissan, that iconic Japanese brand, really has some vehicles in their lineup that their names go so far back especially with the Pathfinder. Now the Pathfinder first appeared in 1985, if you could believe that. And it's been since 2012, since there has been a total redesign. Now we are in generation number five with this 2022 Pathfinder. And what I wanna find out is, how does it go up against the top selling three row midsize SUV, the Kia Telluride? Because I think a lot of manufacturers, including Nissan, had to go back to the drawing board and really rethink what they were going to bring to market because of how great the Telluride has not only been selling, but of course it's selling so well because of what it's bringing to the table. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our platinum trim Pathfinder and see should you be going Nissan Pathfinder over the Kia Telluride? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the styling. They really made a nice bold strong statement, but with some futuristic touches. And it all starts at the headlight design. You're gonna get full LED headlights, daytime running lamps. I like the way they kept it all contained together. So you're gonna have those daytime running lamps, your headlights, and the way that it flows into the fender gives it that 21st century look that I think that's where the Telluride kind of falls a little short. I think that the styling is bold. It's definitely very muscular but it kind of borrows a lot from other vehicles where this looks totally fresh and unique. Now you'll notice the hard body line coming off the fender, running into the front fascia. I like the way there's no fake vents, nothing stuck on. And then as we come across the front, that massive V motion grill, that's what Nissan calls that style. You look at all their different vehicles, it has that V motion grill. Of course, we got our updated Nissan badging. And then if you notice the three notches up top, they did that on purpose to tie it back in to the original 1985 Pathfinder. We got a forward facing camera, some shiny chrome. I think it would be kind of cool for them to bring out like a night edition or a dark edition and see that in dark chrome. But working your way all the way to the bottom, I do like this lower section, the way it kind of extends out. We do have LED fog lamps and some nice bright metallic silver on the bottom portion. But definitely comparing it to the Telluride, beauty's gonna be in the eye of the beholder, but it's nice to see the other brands raising their game. Now, when we get up onto the hood and raise on up, I do like the nice soft crease that they put in the hood to meet with that three-slotted grill area. Everything else is just gonna be strong, powerful lines that go towards the windshield and curve towards the A-pillar. As we curve around the block here, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. Our platinum trim has 20 inch wheels. Now that's gonna put it on par with what you could get with the, say, Telluride SX is gonna be those 20 inch wheels. Machine aluminum, the dark gray finish, nice multi-spoke design. I think it works well with our particular color. The one thing I am gonna have to zonk is the flat black around the fender treatment. I at least think on the platinum trim, which is the top trim, it should be color matched, but you know what? The Telluride doesn't do it either. Nice amount of space in between the inside of the fender and the top of the tire. But once again, it falls under the beauty is in the eye of the beholder because they're bringing basically the same equipment to the table. It is front wheel drive based, both this and the Telluride, but we have four by four in our platinum trim to get us through that muddy, sandy stuff. Now going down the side of the vehicle, like I said, the powerful line. It's almost like the fender is kind of flared out and then it tucks in as it gets into the door of the body line. Gloss black on your mirror caps. You do have your LED turn singles. And we do have our 360 degree camera on the platinum trim. I think one of my favorite things about this Pathfinder is the two-tone style. So you're gonna have the blacked out roof, the rest is gonna be that nice ruby red metallic, shiny bright metal work, even on the bottom with the Pathfinder name. I like the way they stamped that Pathfinder name in there. Gives it some nice 
style from the side of the vehicle. And then like I was telling you, the actual way they did the body lines, look at how it flares out on the rear passenger door and then takes that bold line all the way to the rear of the vehicle. We got nice gloss black raised roof rails. You could put up to about 300 pounds worth of stuff up there. And then as we work our way towards the rear, this is another design element taken from the original Pathfinder. You can't do a triangular window, but I do like that overall flow that they have coming into the rear. LED taillights, clean on the glass, stubby roof spoiler. My favorite part though is that bold Pathfinder name. So smart to design it that way with the new Nissan badge. A Little bit of gloss black. We're gonna have to zonk that, but like I said, on the Telluride, it's kind of even Stevens. They have the same, same rear wiper. Would be nice to tuck it underneath. And then as we drop down, you are gonna get the nice shiny silver, our full towing capability. And you can see how the rear of the vehicle as well has that nice strong body line from front to back. Love that style, but why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and compare numbers with the Telluride. All right guys, we got the hood popped. We do have a prop rod. I am gonna zonk that, at least on the platinum trim, it should have hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood though, tasteful engine cover and we have V6 power. The great news is, lining this up against the Telluride, you also have naturally aspirated V6 power. But what do we have? We have a 3.5 liter V6, 285 horsepower, 259 pound-feet of torque, they got rid of the CVT transmission. Hallelujah. Thank you, Nissan, for dumping that. We do have a ZF nine-speed automatic transmission. So if you're comparing that to the Telluride, we got one extra gear because the Telluride has an eight-speed. This has a nine-speed automatic. Four by four on our particular one, zero to 60, 6.7 seconds. MPGs, 21 the city, 26 on the highway. The vehicle does weigh 4,481 pounds. And where it's gonna beat the heck out of the Telluride is it could tow up to 6,000 pounds. Another piece of great news is that that four by four capability, obviously front wheel drive could send up to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. But while we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see how it stacks up against the Telluride. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum Trim 4x4. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, you're a genius. I've been thinking about the Telluride. I've been thinking about it freaking nonstop. But ever since I heard about this new Pathfinder, it's reminding me of my uncle who had a 1988 Pathfinder. I'm thinking about getting one. I'm liking this one. How much is it? Very good question. MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is right around $50,000. That puts it on par with the Telluride SX Prestige trim, but let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Love the style and the materials. They did a two-tone motif with the cream and the darker material, all soft touch. The stitching is very nicely done. You do have a bit of gloss black around the switch gear which I'm not in love with, but I love that brushed aluminum finish style going on right in the middle of the door panel. And then the door pocket is large enough for two meatball subs, footlong subs from Subway, extra parm. Why just get one? Wash it down with a bottle of Code Purple Mountain Dew. Now going from the door panel to the dash, look at that aluminum finish. Very nice quality, even the way they did the AC vents. Great style, this has the optional Baker's Dozen Bose sound system. 13 speakers for pure sound enjoyment for your ear holes. And then you're also gonna get the stitching just like on the door panel. Nice soft touch of this Twinkie tray, Pathfinder trademark Twinkie tray. You can fit tw uh, three Twinkies in there and it's got some nice traction grip so they're not gonna slide out. And then we get to the infotainment side of things. This is all new for 2022. Nine inch infotainment. now that is smaller than the Telluride system, but this does have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. They could have actually made the screen larger. There's a bit of dead gloss black on both sides, but it is a nice clean setup. It is also a little gloss black heavy all the way around. Just don't touch it and you won't have to get fingerprints, but you could just hit menu, so simple and then you're able to go into just about anything. You wanna do navigation, we could go on our, bring our map up. There it is, nice and clear. 
We could bring up camera. There it is out the front with trajectory, our 360 degree camera looking good. And as we keep working our way down, we got our start stop button, heated seats and ventilated seats, dual climate control, heated steering wheel, and then dropping your way down a little bit further is gonna give you a 12 volt, a USB-C and a USB and a wireless charging pad. We have our electronic shifter for the ZF nine speed automatic. Little tiny cubby here for some Tootsie Rolls. Two cup holders. You actually have a total of 18 cup holders in this Pathfinder, but look at what we have, the bridge system. I love this bridge style of storage because you could get an extra box of Twinkies, or if you already ate the Twinkies, put a purse, a purse, a sack, a satchel, maybe just a bag of apples down there for later. Golden Delicious. Mmm. Mode selector knob. We got our different modes. I'll show you more of that when you come to the business end. Just a little touches. Putting the Pathfinder name here. Semi soft. Open this bad boy up. What do we got? More room for another box of Twinkies. And you could put some Tic Tacs in there. So you could pop a Tic Tac when you're about to kiss your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, or wife. Or maybe you're going to kiss yourself. You know, like I say, if you can't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. And it's nice to have fresh breath. Seats. Love the soft material. Look at the way they did the perforated. The two-tone is stylish. You do have electric assist for the passenger, for the driver, and we have that panoramic sunroof. So that also puts it on par with the Telluride having a panoramic sunroof. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind a flat bottom steering wheel in our new Pathfinder. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have two memory seat settings. I like the aluminum sill panel down here and this Pathfinder Finder script lights up LED at night. You got your seat controls, easy to get to. The lower lumbar is very nice. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room. I could grow a few inches and still feel good in here. What's fascinating, you're gonna get a flat bottom steering wheel. Looks like it's out of a Nissan 300ZX or something. Flat bottom, like the leather. You do get paddles on the back of the wheel to shift up and down that nine speed automatic. You don't get paddles on the Telluride, we got a head-up display, electric tilt and telescoping steering wheel, and they thinned out the rim and the spokes very nicely, hollowed out the center, and then look what we have. You don't get that on a Telluride. That's a 12.3 inch digital display. Look at the graphics, look at the fonts. Everything's super clean and you could scroll through a cornucopia of information, plus we have all those drive modes as well. You know what we're doing, we're going full sport mode but nice that they have that full digital display. Why don't we go ahead though, why don't we go ahead and get in that mid-row and see how your passengers are gonna enjoy this 2022 Pathfinder. Right, guys, mid-row time in this Pathfinder. And this is where there's gonna be some pluses and there's gonna be some minuses comparing it to the Telluride. Now you do have the captain's chairs, thin armrest, just like a Telluride. So I am gonna have to zonk that. I wish they'd make that a little bit wider for some actual arm to rest there, but the backs of the seats, soft touch material, massive pockets. You could put a couple travel board games back here. Maybe Monopoly, if you wanna not make any friends or break up your whole family, you could play a few rounds of Monopoly. Maybe some Battleship, maybe even some Simon Says. You have your climate control central area here. Adjust the uh, blower fan switch, the temperature. We do have heated seats, but no ventilated seats. And that's gonna be a zonk because on the Telluride, you could get ventilated seats. You do have a USB-C, USB, and a home power source. This center console area is perfect for a bag of Fritos, maybe some, uh, I don't know, cheese puffs, some Cheetos, two cup holders, but this is the best part. You ready for it? You remove this panel, and then what you do is, is you reach for the handle inside, and you actually could take this with you, or you could take it and just throw it, and that kind of, freeze up this whole center area. Now, according to Nissan, the driver could actually turn around and do that whole action with one hand. Can't do that with the Telluride, but what I do like is you do get full sliding seats and full reclining seats, AC vents up top. You got your security sunshades for the peepers and the creepers. I think the only thing I'm a little confused of, why is it on model year 2022? we don't have full LED lighting on the interior. This reminds me of my mom's old Buick 
a state wagon, grand estate wagon, having lighting like that. But why don't we go ahead, let's get this thing back together and get into the third row, see how much room you All have. All right, guys, third row time. Real simple to move the seat forward. You hit the electric button right up top there, and the whole seat moves forward. The great news is you could actually move the seat forward with a child seat in the actual chair attached, obviously without the child in it, and it'll move forward so you don't have to keep disconnecting things. But this third row, pretty much on par with the Telluride. My knees are about the same height. I wish they were just a little bit lower, but what I do like is you, of course, have rear AC vents, and we do have USBs in the back seats with your two cup holders and a great quarter window on the back. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into that cargo area and see what the heck we could fit in a new path. All right, guys, we got the rear cargo area open. It is electric assist, and what I am very happy to say is you're gonna get a ton of space, both on the width and also the height. If you're wondering, well, Joe, what's some hard numbers? I need some hard numbers to compare this to the Telluride. So you're basically looking at 17 cubic feet of space with the seats up, fold the rear seats down, the third row, 45 cubic feet of space, fold down the mid row, you got 85 cubic feet of space. What I really enjoy is that they have this wonderful storage area. You go to the beach, you got the sandy gear, you could put everything in there, the snorkel, the fins, and maybe uh, a shell or two that you have discovered. Put that down. To put the seats down, it's real simple. You're just going to go ahead and pull on that lever. If you want to bring it back up, you just pull on the tether. But it's that simple to fold the seats down. I think the biggest news is, you see the width here? You could actually take a four by eight sheet of plywood and just slide it right on in. In the Telluride, you're gonna have to do this and put it in on an angle, which means, first of all, it's gonna block your vision. Second of all, you're not gonna be able to get as many sheets of plywood that in the Telluride that you could get in this Pathfinder. But why don't we go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready, Let's take this Pathfinder for a little spin. All right, guys, we're leaving our parking lot area. We're in the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. Like I said, we have it in sport mode. And right away, it's just such a big difference compared to the previous generation. Absolutely love not only the style on the outside, but they did a great job with the style on the inside. Is it perfect? No, but the Telluride is not perfect either. Steering feel, even in sport mode, has a nice light touch to it. Visibility, side mirrors are great. You're gonna get that 360 shield protection from Nissan. Blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist. Love the head up display. And really quiet in here. They did a great job with sound deadening and also the thickness of the side glass. Really, really makes a nice quiet environment in here. Getting to everything is super simple and having that 12.3 inch digital display really allows you to just have so much information and it's got a nice 21st century look and feel to it let's go ahead and do a little bit of on throttle nobody's behind us from a dead stop on throttle here we go So nice smooth shifts, gets the power down very effectively, and you actually have a display here where we could see just how much is being shown with the torque delivery, which is kind of cool. So you actually have many different ways to display information to allow you to see exactly whatever it is you wanna see, including your Sirius XM, or anything else, or you could just have nothing, which is kind of nice to just leave it clear. All right, guys, I have that display up there. On oh, throttle, here we go. See how it send, shows how it sends the power with those smooth shifts. Brakes feel good. The chassis, they did a lot of great work to the chassis, all four corners, really allowing you to feel confident. Plus, you're gonna be very, very surprised the off-road capability of this Pathfinder compared to the Telluride. But uh, being able to show that information, having the electronic tilt and telescoping steering wheel is a welcome addition on top of everything else, which is fantastic. All right, guys, what I wanna do is obviously many people are gonna be driving these Pathfinders to work, 
picking up the kids from school. I want to get out on the highway here and just show how wonderful the driving experience is. Visibility, like I said, is phenomenal. The A pillars are pulled super wide apart to give you great visibility. And the nice thing is with the V6, you're going to have just enough power to get out of your own way and to get on the highway and merge super smoothly. But here we are doing around 60 miles an hour and it's just a really great experience. The seats are comfy. The bottom cushion is long enough for people with longer legs like myself. The amount of headroom is great. And get to everything is just perfectly placed, especially with the storage areas and the wireless charging pad. That's always uh, something important where they have that located, easy to get to kind of thing. But uh, really gonna have uh, a good experience going down basically any kind of road with this Pathfinder. But let's go ahead, let's go on throttle, drops down and we are off. Nice shifts. I love the bold hood. The way you can see the whole width of the hood gives it that nice strong appearance with the flat roof. But the nine speed does such a great job shifting smoothly. I'll go ahead, put it into manual shift mode. So you do have a small gear indicator at the bottom that allows you to use the paddles. If you wanted to do this with the Telluride, you're gonna have to use the shifter because there's no paddles on the back of the steering wheel. But there's second gear. Actually pretty fast operation when you hit the paddle. It switches the gear just like you want it to. But let's go ahead, let's go on throttle first gear. On throttle, here we go. So a little bit of wheel spin before it sent the power to the rear wheels. But once we are up and running, like I said, we can get on the highway very, very easily. Super smooth over the torn up road. But overall, such an improvement from the previous generation Pathfinder. But I hope that this gives you a nice overall feel comparing the two vehicles. We're gonna get back to where it all began and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a great day with this Nissan Pathfinder. Definitely wanna thank Steve and the whole crew over at Nissan for allowing Radies Rides access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Which way would you spend your money? Would you go with the Telluride or would you go with the Pathfinder? Has Nissan won you over? A lot of people left with the last generation because of some of the issues that they were having, but it's nice to see them kind of bring back some of that old school magic. But let me know what you think in the comments section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the first link, become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the muscle behind the camera. She is full 4x4 equipped. Thank you, Lori, for doing the business. Show her some love in the comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.